Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well. Let's see today's question. So today's question, we are taking this up from the topic of quadratic equations. And if I talk about the question which is given to us here from this topic, the question tells us that alpha and beta are the roots of a quadratic equation which is x square plus root 6x plus 3 equal to 0. So we have been told that alpha and beta are the roots of this quadratic. And further, we have been asked to find the value of the expression, which is alpha raised to 23 plus beta raised to 23 plus alpha raised to 14 plus beta raised to 15. That has to be divided by alpha raised to 15 plus beta raised to 15 and alpha raised to 10 plus beta raised to 15. So we have been asked to find the value of this entire expression given to us. And the four options that are related to this question are given by 72, 9, the last, next option 729 and the last option given to us is 8. So these are the four options given to us. We need to figure out which one out of the four options is the correct answer for the expression which is given to us. Before understanding the expression, first let's try to find out the two roots for the quadratic given to us. So if I have a quadratic equation in the form ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0, if I want to find the roots of this quadratic equation, that is x, that is given by the formula minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac upon 2a. So that is the formula which helps us to find the roots of the quadratic. And if I talk about the equation which is given to us, it is x square plus root 6x plus 3 equal to 0. So if I compare it with my general equation, a becomes 1, b becomes 6, c becomes 3. So from this, I understand that x is nothing but minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac upon 2a. So you get this minus root 6 plus minus root of 6 minus 12, which is minus 6 upon 2. From this, we understand one idea. That is minus root 6 plus minus minus 6. I can write as root 6 into root of minus 1 upon 2. So from this expression, I understand root of minus 1 is nothing but your imaginary number i. So you get this as i. So your x becomes minus root 6 plus minus root 6i upon 2. So if I take out root 6 common, I get minus 1 plus minus i upon 2, which I can write that as root 2 into root 2. And root 6 also I can write that. So you get this, root 2 root 2 cancelled out. So you have the entire expression here with us. That is root 3 into minus 1 by root 2 plus minus i by 2. So that are the values of x that we have here. If I try to simplify this idea, let's do that. x is equal to root 3 minus half plus minus i by root 2. So now I can write this in the form of cos theta plus i sin theta. If I try to write this entire expression in the terms of cos theta plus i sin theta, that is equal to, we know it is e raised to i theta. And in the case of e raised to minus i theta, I can write that as 1 upon e raised to i theta, which is 1 upon cos theta plus i sin theta. That if multiplied with cos theta minus i sin theta, so if I rationalize the expression here, I get that cos theta minus i sin theta in the numerator. In the denominator, I have a plus b into a minus b, which is a squared minus b squared. So cos square theta minus i square sin square theta. So i square is also minus 1. So minus into minus b set plus, so you get cos square theta plus sin square theta, which is nothing but equal to 1. So your denominator turns out to be 1. So from this, I get cos theta minus i sin theta is the value of e raised to minus i. So I have this e raised to minus i theta as cos theta minus i sin theta and e raised to i theta as cos theta plus i sin theta. So these are the values we have for x. 
Let's see. X is equal to root 3. If I try to write the real part in terms of cos theta, that is equal to minus half. So I know that all silver T cups. So in the second quadrant, cos is negative and cos pi by 4 gives you 1 by root 2. So in the second quadrant, you have pi minus pi by 4. So your entire angle from here is 3 pi by 4, which is pi minus pi. So you get that I can write minus 1 by root 2 as cos of 3 pi by 4 plus minus you have i into again 1 by root 2. So i into 1 by root 2. 1 by root 2 is cos pi by 4 also. It is also cos 3 pi by 4 because in the second quadrant sine theta is cos. So I want to write it in the same terms of angle theta. I can write that as sine of so you get this x as root 3 cos theta plus i sin theta or cos theta minus i sin theta. You know it is nothing but e raised to plus minus i theta where theta in this case is 3. Instead of theta I can just write that as e raised to plus minus i. So you have this entire expression here. Now let's try to find out the values of alpha and beta because we have got two roots. And those two roots are given to us as alpha and beta. So I get it. Alpha is root 3 e raised to i e pi by 4. And beta is root 3 e raised to minus i. Now if I have the entire idea with me, I try to simplify the expression given to me. Taking two at a time. So if I take first two alpha ratio by three plus beta ratio by three. I get this root 3 e raised to i 3 pi by 4 the whole raised to 23 plus root 3 e raised to minus i 3 pi by 4 the whole raised to. So from here I understand root 3 raised to 23 is common from both the terms. If I take it out common I get e raised to i 69 pi by 4. plus e raised to minus i 69. Now if I have that angles addition, I can just write that e raised to i theta plus e raised to minus i theta if it's added. I know it is cos theta plus i sin theta plus cos theta minus i sin theta. So I get this i sin theta gets cancelled out you get 2 cos theta. So if I just write that in terms of cos, I can simplify this idea also as root 3 raised to 23 and you get this as 2 cos of 69 pi by 8. So this is your first simplified expression. The other expression we had here was alpha raised to 14 plus beta raised to 14. Again since the powers are same, I can again simplify this idea as it is putting root 3 e raised to i 3 pi by 4 the whole raised to 14 plus root 3 e raised to minus i 3 pi by 4 the whole raised to 14. So from this I can again take out root 3 raised to 14 common. You would be left with e raised to i 42 pi by 4 and minus 42 pi by 4. So again it becomes in the form of e raised to i theta plus e raised to minus i So from this expression I get this root 3 raised to 14 and e raised to i theta plus e raised to minus i theta I got this 2 cos theta. But again it comes to cos. Similarly if I try to write the other expression alpha raised to 14 plus beta raised to 14. You get that entire expression also 3 e raised to i 3 pi by 4. Plus root 3 e raised to minus i. In exam, you should not write all of the steps. You can just write it down similarly. I'm just writing it to make you understand. So root 3 raised to 15, I get it common. I have e raised to i 45 pi by 4 plus e raised to minus i 45 pi by 4. Again, it is the same angle, so I can write 2 cos of just 45 pi. Further, we have alpha raised to last time here. 
we have it as alpha raised to n plus beta raised to so from this i'll again get root 3 raised to 10 and we will again have e raised to i 3 pi by 4 the whole raised to 10 so 3 into 10 becomes 30 so i can write r as 2 cos of 30. now once i have all the four expressions with me if i put that in the expression for which we have been asked to find the value alpha raised to 23 plus beta raised to 23 alpha raised to 14 plus beta raised to 14 alpha raised to 15 plus beta raised to 15 and the last was alpha raised to 10 plus beta raised to 10. If I solve this entire idea, I get this root 3 raised to 23, 2 cos of 69 pi by 4. So if I try to write 69 pi by 4 in the terms of multiples of 2 pi, because we know that 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, all the even multiples of pi will have all the even multiples of pi will have same angle as 0 because they are coinciding with the angle 0 with the median 0. So if I write, try to write out 69 pi by 4 in the terms of even multiple I can write that as 64 pi plus 5 pi upon 4 plus we have root 3 raised to 14 again because of the power of 14 and here we had 2 cos of 42 pi by 4 so 2 cos of 42 pi by 4 if I want to write it in terms of even multiple because if I divide 4 and 64 I'll get 16 pi likewise if I try to do this here I can write that as 40 pi plus 2 pi upon because 40 by 4 will also give you 10 pi this is again even multiple. We are trying to write our entire angles in the even multiples. Next idea. We have root 3 raised to 15. 2 cos of 45 pi by 4. So 45 pi I can write again as 45 plus 5. And here we have root 3 raised to 10. 2 cos of, we had 30 pi by 4. So 30 pi, if I want to write down, I can write that as 24 pi plus 6 pi pi. Because if I am dividing 24 by 4, I get that as 6 pi, which is again. So I get this entire idea with me. If I try to simplify that, I get root 3 raised to 23. 2 cos of 64 pi by 4 I get if I simplify or split this 64 by 4 gives you 16 pi so 16 pi is nothing but 0 and plus 5 pi pi, pi, pi by 4 will be left out so you get 2 cos of 5 pi by 4 plus root 3 raised to 14 you get 40 by 4 again 10 pi again an even multiple so I can treat that as 0 degrees the left with 2 pi by 4, 2 pi by 4 is nothing but pi by 2. So you get cos of pi by 2. You get root 3 raised to 15, 2 cos of. Again, you have 40 by 4, 10, 10 pi is nothing but equal into 0 plus pi pi by 4. So you again have cos of pi, pi pi by 4. And the last idea we have root 3 raised to 10. 2 cos of 25 by 4 is 6 pi, 6 pi is again 0 and 6 pi by 4 is left which I can reduce it to form 3 pi by 2. So we have cos 90 and cos 270 here. This cos 90 we know cos of 90 that is this is equal to 0 and cos of 270 is also equal to 0. So we have both of these ideas coming out. So, 0 multiplied with anything will give you this entire term. So, this entire term becomes equal to 0 and this entire term also becomes equal to 0. So, what we are left with here, let's write that down. So, you are left with 2, 3 raised to 23, 2 cos of 5 pi by 4 plus 0. So, nothing is left. In the denominator, we have root 3 raised to 15. 
2 cos of 5 by 9. Again, because this is 0 added, 0 does not change anything. From this, I can also understand 2 and 2, I can directly cancel out. Cos 5 by 4, 5 by 4 also can be cancelled out. So you are just left with root 3 raised to 23 upon root 3 raised to 15. And that if I solve further gives me root 3 raised to 23 minus 15, that is root 3 raised to 8. That is equivalent to 3 raised to 8 into half, which is 4. So 3 raised to 4, that gives you answer as so I get the correct answer for the expression which was asked to us and that comes out to be the meaty one. And if you see the option that matches here correctly with the answer is option. So D is the correct answer for the question which is given to us here. I hope you have understood how to solve this type of question which deals with finding the values of the expression by giving a quadratic equation which would be alpha and beta. So we just figured out alpha and beta, we converted them into terms of e raised to i theta. Once we got alpha and beta, we just substituted and simplified that. And simplifying all the four expressions, we put that in the entire expression for which we have been asked to find the value. That gave us the answer to come out of it. And that matches with option. So D is the correct answer for the question. I hope you have understood how to solve this type of questions. I'll see you again tomorrow with some other question from some other topic. And we are going to continue our series of questions on JW means. So stay tuned for more videos to roll out. Also, do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Do share these videos with your friends also who are involved in this same preparation of journey of JW questions. Thank you.